Love line. Yes, it is. Phone numbers 1 800 L O V E 191. 1 800 568 3191. Fax number 310 854 4455. This is Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. He's a board certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. And it's Valentine's Day. It certainly is. And let me tell you what I think Valentine's Day essentially has turned into. For you? No, for man for in everybody. general. All right, I'm ready. It has turned into a religious holiday for men to atone for their sins. Basically, like Yom Kippur right. is for the Jews. Yes, yes. That's what this is. It's okay. a day of atonement mm-hmm. because we've been a-holes the other 364 days out of the year. We've not done right. We have not bought the flowers. We have not done the surprises. We have not been spontaneous. We have not made the effort. Until tonight. Until tonight. Right. And this is the one chance. Actually, this is the birthday. Yeah. But this especially. Yeah. You have to come through tonight. Right. And tonight we have a very special guest. We have... You've got the most amazing grin tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just see, you're like, you're like almost uh, uh, drooling in anticipation. I, I am like a shark yes, staring at yes. the chum bucket. I, I really do feel kind of fearful tonight for some reason. Not that your lovely wife, Susan, is in any way close to a chum bucket. But I'm saying I am that excited. I'm, I'm the I'm edge the of my... <laughs> you're the chump bucket tonight. We are bringing Susan Drew in. Mrs. Drew. Right. <laughs> Nancy Drew. No, we're bringing Susan. That's Drew's love. Now, how long have you guys been married? Five years this July. She was the bearer of your triple right. seed. That's right. She carried around three kids. That's right. That is love, That's, my friend. Yes. And let me tell you, sprung right back into shape like some sort of cartoon character. <laughs> Fit is a fiddle, this girl. Svelte. Yes, Svelte. Yes. Somebody else called her that tonight. Did you tell him that? Yeah. Okay. Very attractive, yeah. and I mean that with all the respect I can muster. Thank you. Just now you're now you're done. Now what's going to happen the rest of the night? I am going to dig into yeah, her. I'm sure I am going to shake her down like uh, Joe Friday. I am going to sweat her like it's the Nuremberg and trial. And by the way, I enjoyed meeting your day tonight. Well, let me tell you what happened with my oh, day. Oh, okay, yeah. I have been going out with someone for a short period of time. She's not a big talker, and actually, I enjoy that. Did you my... atone today? I did. I, I was pretty good, but we're going to really celebrate on Friday oh. because tonight we just had a little dinner. Mm-hmm. Now, what we tried to do with me is we tried to line up an old girlfriend of mine to come on the show. Right. She would have no part of that. Somebody who would speak honestly about you. <laughs> yeah, because this new girl I've been going out with just a few weeks has no dirt on me yet. Right. At least she doesn't see it. Oh, right. The dirt is not rubbed off onto her right, yet. Right, right. But, oh, Lord knows it's it's coming too. But the the point is is we had Cynthia, my old girlfriend, who I'd gone out with for almost two years, who could have come in here and just Killed crucified you. Yeah, me. I was, I, now I was looking you for that You would have been bucket. elated. But yeah. the point is is she could not make it in because her new boyfriend would have none of that, and that's mm. how guys are. He right. claimed that he did, he had something special planned. But, but as any guy will tell you, that is a big load of crap. He didn't want her coming in and spilling the beans. And that, that's basically it. Second choice was me trying to get a girl who was on the cover of a raft. Now, this story takes a little explain, but I go into the Big Five Sporting Goods and have been for the last 10 years. And each time I go in, no matter what I'm going in for, I walk straight to the raft section, the pool float section. Yeah. And I grab this box because there's the greatest looking girl in the world floating around. You know, yeah, yeah. they're smart. Yeah. They don't put like postmenopausal chicks with thyroid problems on the raft. They want to sell rafts. Yeah. They put great-looking brunettes and blondes and leggy and tan. And, and, and you were going to meet this girl. How? I, I would just stare but at this box. But you wanted to meet her for today. Like her. In 24 hours, you are going to come up with her. How are you I know. We that? couldn't find her. She moved to Hawaii. I imagine that. So that was it. Then we tried to get Adrian Barbeau. She would have none of us. So the point is, is I'm dateless, but it's okay because we can grill Susan. And she's going to come in here in about five minutes. But first, we're going to the phones. Gail. Yes. You're on Loveline. I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah, Gail. Um, I was diagnosed with uh, dysplasia of the cervix. Mm-hmm. And then I had, <clears throat> excuse me, I had a colposcopy done, and then I had a LEAP procedure done. Which kind? A LEAP procedure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And after going back in for my six-month exam after that, my pap smear came back abnormal again. Mm-mm. You have a cone? And I want to know what my... Are, are they going to do a cone biopsy? Uh, we haven't discussed that. Yeah. What is dysplasia? It, it's sort of pre-cancer. Mm-hmm. It's, it's why you get pap smears, to find that stuff, go after it, get it freezed off or burned off or cut off, 
So you don't get cancer? Before it becomes cancer. Before it becomes cancer. Okay. Just like if you had a little skin thing that was looking like it was become cancer. Like a take, mole or something. A mole that looked bad, you take it off, it's gone. Okay. That's the good news about cervical dysplasia. When it's gone, it's done. But it does tend to recur. And the more procedures that are done to your cervix, the more potential there is for there to be problems with what's called cervical incompetence. Uh-huh. Meaning that the trouble, cervix has trouble really holding the baby in the uterus. But not, I wouldn't think it'd be much with what you've had so far. I mean, this is really common what you've had done. Real common. Even even after having the leap procedure, yeah. it came back on my pap smear well, as, as severe dysplasia. I didn't say that. I said what you've had done so far is very common. Okay. Uh, the fact that you had it done again, I don't know. I wonder if they're going to do something more to you. And, and that, of course, increases the probability. They, but, said they, they said they couldn't do the leap procedure again for another two years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I just want to know what my chances are or what the odds are of it possibly turning into cervical cancer. Or I, I can't give you an exact number, but there's a real probability of that, so I'm sure they're going to do something to take care of it, okay? But the, uh, I'm sh- and again, I don't think your risk of, of infertility problems, if that's what your question is, is going to be that great, okay? Okay, thank you. Right. Good luck, Gail. So you're saying they found it and they're going to keep on top of it now. Yeah, that's, she's going to be fine, but, but she's worried about her fertility issues. Those are real concerns, but I, I, I bet they'll, they won't be And they problem. got all kinds of stuff going on these days, right? Yeah, I mean, you and Susan had some, some oh, yeah. stuff, right? Oh, oh, absolutely. We had we're we're for a, a slam dunk and a fertility campaign, right? I mean, you you I mean, twenty years ago, would you have been able to utilize this technology? No. Was it in place? No, 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 no. Right. So, twenty years from now, don't you think we'll be able to just? Yeah. Oh, it's still moving forward. Absolutely. Yeah, that's why I'm I'm freezing my sperm as we speak. Sabrina. Hi. Um. Hello, Adam and Doctor Drew. Hello. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Um, I have a question and sort of a problem. I love to masturbate. I do it all the time. But lately, when I masturbate, I can't orgasm. I mean, I can orgasm when I'm having sex with my boyfriend, but I can't do it on my own. I was just wondering what I could do. How old are you? 16. Anne, producer Anne, (laughs) attention, calling Dr. Flambe. Anne... Get on the get on the horn here and tell young Sabrina she's having difficulty with her uh, masturbatory. Are you on any uh, medications? Um, just stuff for my arthritis. What? Um, uh, there's some stuff called Daypro. Yeah. I'm on Vicodin. Oh, well, that's Vicodin. Why are you taking Vicodin? I have a rare case of arthritis. What kind? Uh, HLH B27. What kind of B27 arthritis? Uh, ankylosis spondylitis. Ankylosing spondylitis. B27 okay. liberator, one yeah, World War II it's, for it's us. A, it's a seronegative spondyl arthropathy called ankyl- ankylosing spondylitis. You're kind of young to get that diagnosis. It usually doesn't start until later. But I will tell you what, the reason you're having a problem is because you're on Vicodin. It's, really? a, it's a strong opiate. Do not take that. The Daypro could, ex- could cause problems, too. But the opiate is definitely going to cause But she's able to reach orgasm with her boyfriend, but, which but, is kind of strange, isn't but it? But I mean, it, whatever it is that the pharmacology is doing to her has caused this side effect. And if she goes off the drugs, she'll go back to her normal state. You, you're you're off- a big believer in the, the exact, you know, uh, pristine environment and uh, circumstance for the, for this behavior, right? Yeah. I certainly am. Right? Okay. So yes. She has, she has fouled that circumstance. She, she has uh, soiled it in some You've way. You've made a this. mockery of the whole masturbatory <laughs> yeah, thank shrine you. that thank I've built. Right. Uh, over the months here at Love Live. <laughs> All right, so clean up. Get off the Vicodin and get back on the stick. And there, there are a number of, <laughs> so there are a lot of other treatments for AS, too, so try okay. to avoid, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go see a rheumatologist, okay? I've seen three of them. Uh, you might, you br- put me on the same thing. Uh, yeah, look at them. Look at them. No better than pushers. No better than street <laughs> pushers, these guys, Drew. Do you know what ankylosing spondylitis is? Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. I lived with it for years. The I watched my dad crumble up like an old leaf and die in front of me. Do you know the pain of that? No. Neither do you. No, I, I have uh. no idea. <laughs> but Drew, really showing off for the ladies tonight, I notice. What? You're really on top of your game. They're giving me good questions. I know, but I think your wife being here sort of is that is, good. Yeah, I mean, like like a lot of guys would like. Y- y- what I mean is, you're doing what you do even better. Okay. Meaning, like, if my lady were here, I'd I'd like m- masturbate even more or some. You, you know what I mean? I would do what I do. Right. I would drink even more coffee. I would pass even more gas. Yes, it would be a lovely event. But you, you're throwing even even more confusing jargon into the mix. Jay, you're on Love Line. Yeah, Doc Drew. Yeah. Got a question for you. Yeah. Past couple days, uh, my girlfriend's been kind of dry, 
And then just today, it's kind of harder when we had sex. And today I noticed that my penis was a little, like, dry and flaky. Right. And she didn't want to, you know, do anything. I said that was fine because she, she couldn't get wet at all. Okay. Really. So, and then that kind of ruined the whole Valentine's mm. deal. So. How's your relationship going? Uh, it was going pretty good, you know. it's It's been a little over a year. She on any medication? No, she's on the pill. Mm-hmm. No, but I don't know. Just the last couple of days, she's noticed that it's it's been kind of well, dry. It was after she got over her period. I, I don't know what it could be. I mean, I, you obviously got to give her a chance to to heal. I mean, give her a chance to, to cool out. If you be yeah. both have been irritated by this thing, don't don't be so yeah. obsessed about it. Use lubricant if you need it. And uh, if she continues to have this problem, get get her a doctor. I mean, it could be related to the pill. could be something else. But uh, I bet it's something that just kind of go, goes but, away. And let, it could be that there's an there's a emotional thing going on. Right. In the I mean, that, that's, I mean, that's, uh, your, your libido affects the moisture yes. factor. Am yes. I right? Right. Uh-huh. And your comfort and your feelings. You right. Know. So if, if she's a little feeling a little down or something, wouldn't yeah. that affect that? Absolutely. It'd be like a yeah. drought, yeah. right? Abs- a drought, exactly. There is something because it's, it's like flaky and... Well, that's just oh, what was. Yeah. That's you. Like, don't worry about that. But right. but, yeah. okay. but uh, uh, worry about what's going on with her. Try to get her to open up and see if there's anything that's really troubling her. Okay. Okay. One All right. Question. Yeah. When does your TV show start? It starts in, uh, in the, the fall. fall. Okay, and you know what channel or Fox? Fox. Fox no. out and yeah. Fox, if whatever, you have Fox, it'll be whatever on Fox. that is. I think we're on like ten and a half. Yeah. We'll be <laughs> we'll be between two channels. Thanks for asking, Jay. Yeah. Well, look who just rolled into the studio, looking looking lovelier than ever, I must say. Susan. Good evening, Adam. Good evening, Drew. Susan's, uh, I almost said son, that would have been a big, a big son of your father. <laughs> <laughs> and wife of famed Dr. Drew. What and, is it like? Well, it's quite impressive, it, actually. It is. I mean, he's a catch. He I mean, is, he is. It's, it's, uh... It's really amazing being married to him because, you know, I just, anywhere I go with him, I feel like the luckiest girl in the room. Oh my I goodness. feel that way every night when I show up to work. You didn't tell me that Valentine's Day was atonement for wife also. <laughs> we are going to build you up like a house of cards before yeah. we <laughs> mow yeah. you yeah. down, I'm, Drew. I'm waiting. And so let me continue on with the praise of Drew. Drew, for a lot of people that don't know because they just hear his voice, is not what you'd picture. Like when a lot of people picture a doctor, they picture like, um, you know, sort of Einstein hair and, uh, you know, the dad from the Happy Days type of physique and maybe a bad chain and maybe, uh, you know, very unkempt, you know, with the hair coming out of the ears and the nostrils and stuff. Maybe some, maybe like a bad beard with some dried egg or something (laughs) in it constantly that everyone's scared to talk to him about. Drew is uh, quite a figure of a man. He's at least 6'2". If anything, I want to be dominated. Wait, wait, wait. He's wait, into wait. all sorts of kinky <laughs> stuff. Come on, he's, Mike. Mike. He's, he's solid as a rock. He's, he's, he's forged from cobalt steel. He's an attractive guy. I mean, he, he really is. And you made the catch of the century. Now, I certainly did. Now, okay, tell us, tell us where you met. We met on the air. The radio. In 1984. Yeah. On this show. Mm-hmm. And that's what she thinks. Anyway, I was I was already. The rest was history. I don't remember meeting you before, before that, but I, but I already was. Uh, you already were lurking, lurking, lurking about. Yeah, yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Drew, doing some stocking. <laughs> what well, you? I wrote a where chapter you, in your book. Where did you see Susan? So we mutual friends. Oh okay. Now did you? Strange. If you really want to get into this, strangely enough. We had run each other at a, at a club two years before that, or three years before that. Oh, you were cocktailing and, at a gay no, bar? No, no, no. And the same thing happened where I, I like, I don't go up and talk to it, but I felt like I really had to talk to this person. I, don't, I, I, I can't even explain to you what, what this was. And uh, uh, Boner? <laughs> and had the same experience again. We were dating and didn't even realize it was the same person until we'd been dating about six months. And he saw a picture of me. At that night. And said, wait, were you there that night? And so, I said, yes. All right, so he walked right up to you at a bar? N- well, Is that he called you... me over to his table and said... I didn't have a table. No, no, I walked right up to you. <laughs> see, Don You Corleone? walked up to me. Okay, maybe, maybe so. Called you over to his table. <laughs> I, I thought that was... <laughs> he didn't remember who it was that night. Forget it. All right, I blew him stop. off. I, I barely remember. Right, but, but he asked you out on just, that evening. I just tried to talk to her. I was like... 
All right. Where, yeah, she gave him the big. Well, she's a beautiful woman. She's used to guys coming up and talking to her, and she's in that in that mode. Now, where'd you go on the first date? We went to uh, a little bistro in Laguna Beach, and then we went to that Mexican place, uh, Las Brisas, for a drink it's afterward. It's all Laguna. Mm-hmm. So this is 84 yeah. now, so he's wearing a leather members-only <laughs> jacket, an afro. No, he looked about the same as he does today, actually. Some some Capizio dance shoes, perhaps. Button down, you know, and maybe a tie. L- yeah. Looking stiff. Oh, he looked You great. thought he was a little uptight when you first met him? She's known that ever since. W- was he giving you this whole big medical rap? Or where were you in 84? You'd already... Just finished. Just finished. Okay, was he giving you, relax, baby, I'm a doctor? Did he, did he work that no, line? No, but he sang opera to me oh, from Newport to Laguna. That's right. It's, it's a little-known fact about Dr. Drew is he is an accomplished opera singer. That is amazing. I told him amazing. he was flat, though. <laughs> Shout out one note, Drew. No, no, Come no. on. No, no, I mean, this is tough enough for me to sit through this. Just one <laughs> La no, Donne no, Mobile. No, so, someday. <sighs> Okay. All right. So you want out. His music charmed me, quite and that, honestly. And, and you hit it off on the first, the first day. Very well. You knew, you, you knew you wanted seconds. Certainly. Right. All right. Now, let's get to some more hard-hitting questions. What kind of underwear does Drew wear? The briefs <laughs> or, or is it the boxers? Well, it's a combination. Okay. All right. I mean, I'm marking whatever it because I got buys, a list. Whatever here. she buys me. Has Drew <laughs> ever broken wind during the act? <laughs> no. Never. Come on. Never. One time. Never. Just once. Never. But you've heard him go to the bathroom and do something like that, right? <laughs> Never. Uh, I can see this is going to be tough. Has he ever gotten drunk and vomited on you? <laughs> <laughs> he did, didn't he? Well. Yes. Okay. I'm taking that. I'm writing yes down. If you're keeping score at home, <laughs> <laughs> that would be a big why. No, I, I have to explain. And Yes. He did. Yeah. What's he doing? What's the, what are you doing? He's doing a semi-four in the well, background like a, like he's on Drew, a carrier deck. Put your hands down, Drew. In, as, an, as a resident and an intern, intern in his training, he was under a lot of pressure, and he had an ulcer. And I'd take him out, and I'd make him eat garlic and drink wine, and then the poor guy, he, he had a real rough time. Now, where'd he vomit? Was it on you? Um, no, no. Yes. No, it was usually like two or three in the morning. He'd wake up, and he'd have a, his ulcer would flare up, and it was terrible. It was I felt really bad. But he never soiled you, I had no you, sympathy for se. him, but, you know, I'm sorry? He never vomited on you? Never. Okay, no. so that's like... That's we'll give it him was like never, half a point. It, it was never a drunken stupor, you know. He just had a bad tummy. Did he ever? Does every get nuts and like play air guitar in his underwear or anything <laughs> like that? Come no. on, he's nuts. No, only when I'm out of the house, I'm sure. Oh, okay. So that we can't substantiate that. All right, let's let's go to a call real fast oh, before we I, go to break. Can Wait, I you answer say a question on the last caller? Yeah, go ahead. I think maybe the problem could be this. Since I am a woman, this I, is the dry I may thing. have experienced this. Right. After your Hypothetically. Peri- after your period, right. you've used plenty of tampons, usually. Right, right. And they dry you out. Right. And you, the day after, it's very uncomfortable to have sex. It, it doesn't lubricate sometimes. Right, because you've, you've, you've mopped up, so to speak. Yes, and you've lost all your moisture in there. And, and sometimes you will have you know, changed... A, your tampon so many times that it it gets really sore and dry in there. Okay, so and that, that's a woman's point of view, right? Oh, I, no, I was going to say that, but I'd never change my tampon. Sandy. Okay. Yeah. You're on Love Line. <laughs> Adam, Susan. Sandy. Okay, my question is not really a problem, but kind of. Okay, I was dating this guy from like July to January. He moved to Colorado in January. He then is coming back this weekend just to see me. And I want to know, how should I greet him? Nude? <laughs> Susan? Other than that. Susan, what, what, you're, you're, you're a woman. We established that with the tampon story, the lengthy tampon story. So tell us, <laughs> how should she greet him? How would you greet Drew if he was out of town for a while and coming home? Here are the kids. <laughs> really, it's about time you're home. Let's honey. say the kids are gone, and it's a weekend, and he doesn't have to work the next day. Well, I'd make sure that I made a nice dinner. Well, he's not landing until two two ten Saturday morning. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're into dessert or cocktails or what have you. No. 
Well, you could probably just, you know, I guess it's 2.10 in the morning. If Are you ready to be dressed for bed, or are you uh, that far in your relationship? Yeah. Well, then just, you know, have something really nice on when he gets there and, and greet him with a nice yeah. big hug and a kiss. Put on Sit those... down. Maybe, you know, if he needs to relax a little bit, you know, maybe give him something to drink or eat. He probably won't want anything if he's been on an airplane. No, massage. Just... You've tapped into it. Give him a rub down. Yeah, a massage or, or a hot bath or something. Heat the oil, put it in the microwave, put a little scent, burn a little incense, put on a little Yanni or something, and give this guy a rub down, and then, of course, have sex. <clears throat> Phone numbers for Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191, 1-800-568-3191, fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. We have, as usual, Dr. Drew, and as unper usual, we have his lovely wife, for Valentine's Susan, Day. for Valentine's for, Day. For my atonement. Who I've been uh, picking at like a miner, trying to get uh, dirt. Try, I, I'm mining you, but you were you're like, uh, you're like a dry well. I'm sorry, he's perfect. I know that, and the listeners know that, and that's why you're here. Because we are trying to unmask Drew. We're trying to find the dark side. Like, he beats the kids a little bit, doesn't he? No, there's nothing wrong with him. Okay, you understand I have to ask He's these questions. Perfect. All right, let's 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 not work this angle for Except too she, much she longer. She mentioned she had some questions for you, though. Oh, she does. Oh, were you guys talking? No, well, no, no, no. She didn't tell me what they were. I'll get to those later. No, go feel free. Well, no, I don't, I don't really have questions, but I... I will. But one thing about Susan is she does not sit in the back seat and let Drew put on the dungarees and drive her around this life. She has a lot of opinions. <laughs> like, for instance, <laughs> she she just got done telling me that last night's show sucked. Yes, right. <laughs> and asked what you'd done to abuse Nev Campbell. What I did to Nev Campbell. Yes. I, last night's show was a weird, there was a weird energy. There certainly was. We, we cannot come up to the plate and hit home runs every time. Once in a while, you foul one off your groin, and that's what happened last night. But I acknowledged it, and I tried like hell to pull the thing back on track, but we just couldn't do it. Yes, it was, it was... Was it that painfully it bad? Sad. It was sad. It a lot <laughs> sad. of the, it was a lot so of the sad. calls were very repetitive, and I, I've decided that you need to have a disclaimer tape at the beginning of every show, and that would uh, be something that would inform most of the male listeners that masturbation is not harmful, and that um, you know, so many times a week will not hurt your health. So please don't call with this question because we've heard it a hundred times. You're right. I was actually thinking about that today. I was not touching myself, by the way. It was just happened to <laughs> pop into my mind, and I was thinking, we do not need another damn call where someone's saying, I masturbate four times a week. I mean, Is that it's a, a great problem? question, but, you know, it, the female listeners are, t are probably tired of hearing it. I don't know. I would, as a male, would enjoy hearing women go off and drone on endlessly about masturbation, but that could be me. Well, but you don't want to hear us. Uh, and, and I'm a fan, so I'm interested in it, you know, but it's... Uh, Oh. I understand. And a point well taken, okay? We won't do that anymore. Ryan. Yeah. You're on Loveline. All right, man. You know, like when you're looking in the back of pornos and stuff? Mm hmm. You know, those, those ads for the penis pump? Mm hmm. Okay, I'm wondering, because uh, of course every male wants a, a large penis, but the thought of pumping up my penis did not necessarily entice me. <laughs> so, like, what's up with those? Do they, do they work? Or, the ones that say enlarge your penis to mammoth proportions? I'm looking at a foot, foot, foot and a half. Oh boy! M mammoth proportions, you don't want woolly it to be mammoth. That big. No, I don't want mammoth proportions. No, I do. No. I do. I'm, I'm asking the question. Do, does it? Will it? Is it harmful? Well, uh, well, no, it's not harmful. You know it works though, because they I show. I'll tell you how you know. They show a picture of a guy, limp, and then they show the same guy with a boner. Right. But so you know that it is, his penis has been enlarged at least two and a half times. Well, you know he got an erection, but you don't know that. I mean. I want the guy with the erection, and then after, he uses the pump with the same erection. All right. I swear to God, I have heard people claim that these things do something. Uh, huh? Uh, Drew says no. I don't know. I think you've tried it. You think I've tried That's it? you know. You think I... That's don't you have you know. to have it surgically implanted? Well, the pump's so easy. It's like twenty nine ninety five. you know? They send it to you. Yeah, not not the internal pump, not the bladder, No, Susan. no, no, the one where you put it. It's like a vacuum. Right. Here is my take on the whole... <laughs> 
Right. Here's my take on the the whole pump thing. Yeah. Worst case scenario, it feels good. Do you know what I mean? But it's like a pressure. Couldn't it like ex- like explode or something? You know. Well, then. It's like a vacuum in there or something. L- listen, this. <laughs> Those things are, uh, they say they come with a guarantee, don't they? Yeah, but I mean, if, if, like, my, if like my penis explodes, how are they going to guarantee that? Ryan, listen. It won't explode. Yes. All right. But it yes. won't work either. Millions of... Okay, that's all I want to know, you know, because I don't want to waste 30 bucks for nothing. This has been proven on countless of morons, countless numbers of morons across the country. Your yeah. penis will not explode. I that say... one makes my penis grow. I say test it out. And call us back. Well, that, that's thirty bucks down the drain. That's I think you're wasting your money. You're saying your penis is not worth thirty dollars, Ryan? <laughs> well, it, it's, it's all right now, you know. It's a good six or seven inches, but it's fine. It's fine. Okay, perfect. I, I that's perfect. Question. I got one more question for Dr. Drew. Ryan. Okay. Yeah. Your I'm, questions I'm, are quite I'm, quite uh, stimulating. Okay. Thanks, man. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> um, I'm in college, you know, so of course. Imagine that. Yeah. We, <laughs> oh, what are you in barber college? No, we're okay. Uh, so we drink a lot down here, you know? Imagine that. Yeah, but uh, I was thinking of uh, changing to marijuana. Beautiful. Well, uh, what are the hell? I mean, because it's, it's a little more under control, you know? Uh, you don't no. Get crazy. I mean, you just sit there. You don't get crazy. Yeah. You, you don't forget stuff. Right. It's, wh- what would you recommend, friend? <laughs> I would recommend you... Neither? Well, it sounds like you have a family history of alcoholism, and so you have momentum with that drug. And you're gonna no, s- no none, of my, none of my parents drink. Your grandparents? No. No, they all died of cirrhosis. Right. Of the liver. What, what's your ethnic background? Uh, German. Okay. Um, I would suggest that you at least try to cut back on alcohol. Don't no, try switching I, I, to something drink... else. If you're not an alcoholic, you should have no trouble cutting back. Well, no, no. You see what I'm saying? I drink about one-fourth amount that people here drink. Look, I'm just telling you for you that pot chronically used has a lot of potentially damaging effects that are more serious, I think, than mild Ryan, alcohol. Ryan, listen. Right. Concentrate on your penis size, would you? And stop bouncing around topically that way. You know what Ryan needs? There should be some invention. Combination penis suction device and bong. <laughs> that, you could move some units of that. It's really, it's a long cylinder. All you just have to do is put like a carb on the side of it, and I think you could work something out. I'm going to look into that. That's the other thing. Susan's I have a always... question for you. Yes. Are men addicted to their penises? Yes. I mean, they sell these pumps in order to make money off of men who are addicted to penises. Right. And, you know, it's this guy's asking if he should go from alcohol to bongs, I mean, alcohol to pot to his penis. I mean, it's like, come on. You yeah. Know? No, they are. Well, you know, you have a young son. But it, for $30, Two sons. you can improve your masturbation, basically. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. And basically. you could never return it because everyone would be too damn embarrassed. Sean. Yeah, how you doing? You're on Loveline. Yeah. Um. Okay. There's a girl that I know, okay? I've been seeing her for about four or five months now and i like her i mean i'll tell you the truth i love her i've never told her that but you know because we're kind of you know we don't say it to each other we write it down on notes or whatever right and uh tap it out morse code yeah (laughs) god forbid she um, should know she's loved (laughs) how how would i like tell her that i love her because it's the first time he's ever told this to somebody you've never told it to anybody no i told it to somebody but i mean not her i mean i really like this girl how was the last time you told somebody that Oh, how long ago was that? How how was that? It was, it was a good feeling. I was that really the, somebody you really did love? Or you just kind of yeah yeah yeah. And good, why good. are you having trouble telling this girl that? It's I mean because I'm scared. I, I mean I like this girl more than anybody I've ever did. And what is it you're afraid of? That if you I tell don't her, scare her off, or you, you know, might, so you might f- frighten her. What else? Yeah, that, that's what I'm just. I'm afraid she'll you know not talk to me. So it's a risk you might lose her if she knows yeah. your true feelings. Yeah. You yeah, don't do it while you're having sex, by the oh, way, yeah, because she won't believe that. Yeah. Uh, I think you just have to sort of come out with it. Yeah. But yeah, Susan, what do you think? When did Drew tell you he first loved you? I mean, do, when he was sober. I don't know. Do you do you remember? I don't remember if you ever did. You don't know where you were when Drew first said those three magic words? Well, not really. Oh, she's in trouble. What, what is that? When did he's he doesn't remember either? Drew, of course he remembers. He comes and he has pictures of it. This is pathetic. You don't know where you were. You on the beach somewhere, perhaps at a restaurant. 
could you make something up? This is horrible radio. I remember, I remember him telling me he would actually he he may consider marrying me once. <laughs> that was about it. I, 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 you know, I remember we were in a limo and I was going to go off to Taiwan to do a modeling shoot, and he said, "Well, I would actually maybe consider marrying you." And I said, "Oh, great!" And I got on the plane and left. But well, I guess that's like I saying think love, you love you. I think it was just more of a natural thing. It happened. We didn't really make a big issue of it. But I think if if you want to approach it in a nice way with somebody that you're worried about getting an adverse response from, just say, you know what, I think make it a nice environment where you're like allowed. Like take her out to dinner. Yeah, like go to the circus well, or something. Well, you know what, that's a little intense. Maybe like taking a walk on a beach or, or walking somewhere where you're not – you know, face to face, looking for a response from her face, and yeah. it'd be having a casual chat with her and say, you know what, I just need to tell you that I think I'm in love with you. You know, don't say, you know what, I really love you. All right, you so know? don't don't just say it, it like you need a response. You know, say first I really liked you, and I'm, I'm we've been really good friends, but I think I'm really falling in love with you, and and see and wait for a response, but don't do it like face to face where you're you're gonna be seeing what her face looks like because she may respond and. It may look differently than what she's actually thinking. All right, so thinking. you're saying leave it open-ended. Don't say, I love you, do you love me? Right. Say, you know what, I say think I, I think, love you. And, say, I'm really falling and, in love with and you. And don't don't pin her down and stare her right in the face and say it. Be walking on the beach, holding hands, Because then you're not going to read stones. into whatever her response is. Right. All right. I love you. Make it comfortable. Hi, this is Rodney Dangerfield. I'll tell you, the guys here at Love Line are the greatest. They're the best, the best in the whole world. Now, will you please untie me? Okay, Rodney. Phone numbers, 1-800-LOVE-191, 1-800-568-3191. Fax number, 310-854-4455. This is Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. He has been kind enough to bring his lovely wife, Susan, in tonight for Valentine's Day. They had a nice dinner. We did. You got a present. You want to open your present, Is it Drew? time? Oh, yes. Please do. It's always present time here at Love Line. And while you're opening the present, I want to continue... Questioning? My questioning for uh, Susan. Susan. This, by the way, is apparently something my mother was surprised at. Is, right? Yes, your mother wrapped it, too, by the way. She goes, oh, don't tell him that. I said, is that kind of like telling... Saying that your mother wrapped it while you're having now you, sex or this something? Is, this is a gift... You, Susan, bought for Dr. Drew. Yes. Oh. <laughs> There's a response. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Boxing gloves. <laughs> wow, woman after my own heart. Oh, yes. In leather and everything. Yes, that's hey, so you yes. can fight through the next year. <laughs> I know where you got. How many ounces are those? 16, 14? I don't know. It was the only pair they had. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. Are made, they okay? Made in Mexico. Let me tell you, <laughs> one of the few things that's okay to be made in Mexico besides tequila is boxing gloves. Yes, 12 ounces. Perfect. These are lovely. Really good. Drew, you can do the rest of the show in your gloves. Now, that is a present. Is it? It certainly yeah. is. Guys aren't guys aren't into, you know, decoupage and stuff like hey, that. I thought it was a great idea. It's guys great don't idea. want mementos. Guys want stuff Perfect. that's made out of leather that they can wear out. To beat well, their wives up go. with. <laughs> there you go. He can work out some of that pent up sexual hostility that he has toward me. <laughs> and me. <laughs> and we're gonna get into that in a few minutes. But first we're going to Vanessa. Vanessa, you're on Love Line. Hi. Hey. I have a question for Doctor Drew. Yeah. Um, well, the, the other day my mom told me that I have something like an intact hymen. Mm -hmm. Which is what you're supposed to have. Well, I don't, because she told me, like, really weird. She was just like, when you were sick, she found it, and it was just a big thing. So she didn't <laughs> tell me. When you were sick, she found it. You're supposed <laughs> to have one. I know, but now she told me that they're like, going to have to cut it open with a knife or no, something. No, oh, oh, maybe you have a, 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 complete, a completely occluded hymen. I have no idea. Yeah, what yeah, yeah. Th there is that. That's a, that is a potential problem. Who you, found that, though? Was my it? doctor. I don't know why. Right. Some hymens have to actually be pen well, wait a minute. What's perforated. he looking for mm. when she's sick? I know. I Should was he wondering. be looking around the, the, that? Yeah. yeah well, sometime. he said that I, I don't know. My mom told me that I have like a yeast infection or something. And go away. Oh, it's mom. That's go mom. Away. Go away. Go away. I'll do it later. What kind of reverence is that you're treating your mother with? Is uh, that your mother? Yes. You're shooing her like she's a pet. Well, because you don't know. Because if anything, I know what she's probably doing in there. In a so, so the what? What? <laughs> I know what she's going to probably do because her boyfriend lives with us now. So, 
Okay, is that situation okay? Yeah, I'm just trying to get her All out. All right, right, let's now. get back to the hymen. Okay. The, what, the, what we're saying is, is that. Is that was that, a Frankie and Annette movie, by the way, from 67. Back to the hymen. Vanessa, for instance, you, you've not had your period yet, right? No. Mm -mm. And the problem is, if she has her period, it will not flow out because it is a complete. This is a complete member. And we talked last night about there being a small opening, right? Right. The, she, hers is completely occlusive. So, will it. Well, it has come to be out, come out like her ear or something, then, no, right? It'll What'll accumulate. happen? Uh, it'll accumulate, and then it'll go be, bad, and then you open it. there'll be trouble. Yeah. Mm. You need to have, like, a, a, a tracheotomy done in your right. nether regions. Right. Am I right? right. Hymenotomy. Hymenotomy. Could, could so I do would, that? When would this happen? If you had the proper training. <laughs> uh, probably not too distant future, frankly. Because no. my mom, like, she, this is how she put it. If when I'm going to have sex with intercourse with a boy, hmm. I will have to have it get an open up, and I will have to come for her, come to her for that. Oh no! But, oh, so mom is using this like a chastity hymen. Uh huh. So she's like, you know, so so she figures like when I'm 30 or something, I'll go to her and go. No, no, no. When you yeah. have your first period, you're going to have to have it opened up. It doesn't have to be. I think when that's how it works. I mean, again, I'm. I'm... Have, you, have you have you had a period yet? All right, so you may you may be able to turn the tables on mom because mom said you need to come to me when you're ready to have sex. Essentially, well, uh, you're ready to have sex, you know, anytime. But when you're ready to get pregnant, you're going to have to have it. Right, but mom is holding this over her head. Meaning, if you went to your mom right now and said, "I want to have this removed," she'd say, "Um, I think we'll give it another few well, years." I, I think your doctor should decide. Right, you got to talk to your doctor about. Well, it. I was supposed to this Friday because right. it canceled. Well, it's not an urgent thing, but get in there and get it taken care of, okay? Well, I have a, because she said that if I wanted to have sex with a boy, I would pass out in pain. Um, right. yeah. It's wow, possible. mom, is she a religious woman? No, not at all. Well, really? Because it's <laughs> pretty crafty. But don't, but don't worry about that. Just get get with the doctor. Get a plan together with the doctor. Don't worry about how your mom is, is dealing with this with you. It's not a big deal. Get it taken care of. And she's, I got, a, she's instilling I have to fear be about honest it. with you. My dad tried this same maneuver. He, on you. He kept my testicles in his sock drawer until I was 17. <laughs> Imagine that. Do you believe that? Yes. I, he still has one of them. No wonder I, you're so obsessed about them all the time. I think he's using it for a keychain. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get it back. Mike. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? I'm all right. Good. I've been going out with this chick for six months, and I haven't talked to her in the past week. I don't know why, and I only see her on weekends because she lives, like, not too far, but, like, 20 miles, you know. Mm-hmm. And I just haven't been talking to her, and I don't know why. And I really want to fix things, but, like, if I call her up right now, what am I going to say? Like, you know, hey, how's it going or something? Forget about what you're going to say. What am I going to say when I sweet talk her back into your life, Mike? It's Valentine's Day. It's a good night to do that. Yes. I'm putting on my Cupid diaper. And what is that, by the way, Cupid? Isn't he wearing a diaper? Something like that. We have an incontinent uh, angel of love. What the hell is that? Who? What was whoever dressed Cupid thinking? I want to see a guy dressed like a pimp. He's a cherub. He's not a guy. He's like a little infant. He's a cherub. A cherub? Yes. No. I want to see a guy like in a fedora with with like a leopard skin, you know, uh, overcoat on. You know, some guy looked like a, a huggy bear from, uh, from Starsky and Hutch. Mike, is that all right? Uh, sure, yeah. Yeah, all let's right. call her. So, all right, Mike, we're going to put you on hold. We're going to get her number, and I'm going to patch everything up between you two. And Susan's going to help me out because sometimes relationship needs a woman's touch. Oh, Am gosh. I right? Oh, gosh. Yeah, you're going to help. Chris. Hi, Adam. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. Uh, hi, Dr. Drew. And hi, Dr. Hi, Susan. Hey, Chris. Hello. What's up? Okay, uh, I just want to start off by explaining I have a friend who's been investigating becoming a dominatrix. Yeah. And she was told that she might have to get involved in transvestite training. And we're just wondering what transvestite training is. Is that like transsexual training? No, it was explained as transvestite training. Oh, yeah. You, you got to go through um, strap camp, which is like boot camp, except for it just goes up your crack there. There's all sorts of things that are involved with that. It, it's a lot like the military. <laughs> Go ahead. Wherever you're going with that, Adam, you just go ahead. You want me to I, keep going? Well, I, I, you want me to stop you? I'd like to turn it over to Susan and ask if Drew's ever asked to be beaten. No. Never? No, and I know nothing of this sort of thing. Even when he's been really naughty? Mm, yes. No. He never wants you to, uh, he never calls you mommy in bed? No. Somebody spank me. <laughs> Chris. 
Yeah. Chris, I, I, I suspect they're talking about transsexual training, the people who are going to change sexes operatively. They're going to have an operation that take them from man to woman or back, have to go through a period of time where they live their life as that sex before they have the operation. That's I mean, amazing. Yeah, for like a couple of years usually with a lot of intensive they therapy put, and evaluation they stuff. put them in a room, they watch ESPN2 <laughs> and drink beer and make fun <laughs> of their, women their for their an woman. entire year. In other year. words, we have no clue, okay? Yeah, say, cause where, where I was confused is what does that have to do with being a dominatrix? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 who, who, who was telling her that? Well, don't um, well, transvestites dress up, right? right? Is there so dominatrix, these adult shops. You have to woman there who did it. Well, look, I mean, you probably learn how to dress up in all this weird garb and and get yourself. Well, in but the we're mood. talking about somebody that's what going to dominatrix dominatrix training school. I mean, what? what, what <laughs> well, I would imagine. <laughs> well, well, listen. All right, let me let me just let me say this. Sort of like I, travel agency school, Drew. <laughs> I used to teach comedy school, comedy traffic school, right? And I had to go through an extensive training period right. because the company I worked for did not want me getting up there and making an ass of myself, which right. I ultimately did. Of course. But first, I had to go through the training. Just like the training you had before getting on this show. <laughs> Extensive. Right. right. Carpentry and boxing. The point is, is if you're going to employ somebody to be a dominatrix, you should probably tell them what you want, some of the policies. Yes. How to handle a cat of nine tails. Right. How to verbally abuse someone. How to shackle someone. How to beat somebody. When to stop beating someone. All right, all right. We got the I'm idea. starting to get excited. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that. I should not work going to stop, were you? Uh, Transsexual training. <laughs> yeah, right, Drew. You're helping on this one, Sue. <laughs> uh -oh. Jamie, you're on Loveline. Hi. I had a question about piercing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just pierced my lip like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering like, when it would somewhat heal more. I, I would think it would have healed by now. You did it yourself? Yeah. Not a great idea. What'd you so. use? A sterilized needle. How did, how did you sterilize it? You have a. I burned it and then. You have I an autoclave at home? Outside for a long time. Yes. And <laughs> yeah, Jamie, that, that is just an uncool thing to be. Well, be. I didn't trust like anybody else to do it because I'd had my friend who had gotten it done and they had pierced one side of his lip yeah. and they had trouble getting the earring in or the lip ring in. So they had to do the other side too. And his lip got so swollen. Well, okay. Where? How old are you, Jamie? Fourteen. Where do people get the intestinal fortitude at fourteen to take a needle a and spear. push it? I mean, I pop a zit on my side and I'm screaming bloody murder and laid up for for weeks. How do you take a pin and push it straight through yeah. your lip? Yeah, it's ridiculous. It doesn't really hurt that much. It's just like after a while, it gets really, really hard because the skin gets sick, and so you're like, Ugh. All right, Drew, real fast, tell her what to do. I, I, you know, if it's more than two, is there any drainage from it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, not, it's either rejecting or getting infected. You could have a real mess in your hands. I mean, it, if, if a true infection sets up in that area, a head and neck infection is, can be devastating. And I suggest you have a doctor take a look at it. Make sure you're using the proper cleaning solutions. Talk to a piercing organization. See what they do in terms of their aftercare. It turns, it turns out, as I understand it, the aftercare, after the piercing, if you've survived it, you don't have any bleeding or any problems you know, structurally, uh, that the aftercare and, and care of the, of the piercing is really what's critically important. Okay. So there. And when we come back, we're really going to put the screws, pardon the pun, to Doc Drew and Susan, and I'm going to dig up some dirt or my name is not Mike the Engineer. Oh, we are back on Loveline. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191 is the phone number. 310-854-4455 is the fax number. And we were talking a little earlier to Brother Mike, who was having some difficulty in a long-distance relationship, if memory serves. And we said we would talk to his significant other, who is named Amanda. Amanda? Yeah? What's going on? You're on Loveline. Uh, hi. Um, I don't know. He hasn't called me for a whole week, so ask him what's going on. He doesn't know. That's part of the problem here. Yeah. All right. We're, we're seeing. Mike, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Amanda, can you hear me? It's Valentine's Day, kitties. Mm hmm What is going on? I don't know. I he feel like a moron. What? I feel like a moron. Why haven't you called her in a week, Mike? Yeah, that's what I want to know. I don't know. I'm stupid. And once you didn't, you probably got too nervous and anxious about doing it and guilty. Oh, you guys, I have another long oh, call. Well, screw them. You're on Loveline. <laughs> and you know it's not Mike. No. <laughs> 
Who would oh. it be? It's probably my friend, um, Alyssa. Don't get it. Okay, I won't. Listen, Mike. Yeah. Why did you call us and complain that the relationship wasn't working, that you haven't spoke to her in a week when it was you? I, that's what I said. I'm a moron. I sabotaged it. What are you thinking? I don't know. You scared that you're getting too close? Well, yeah, kind of. You scared that you have feelings that are too strong? Yeah. Why don't you tell Amanda how you feel right now? I feel I, I feel like a moron. No, no. We know you're a moron, but how do you feel toward uh, Amanda? I love her. I love her with all my heart. All your heart. Amanda, do you hear that? Mm-hmm. What do you think of Mike? I love him, too. It's... Oh, God. <laughs> Amanda? Uh, say, Mike, I love you. Mike, I love you. Love you, too. Okay, all right, Amanda, do it right. And you too, Mike. I'm doing it right. Amanda, <laughs> tell him you love him and tell him like you're dying. I love you. I love you too, Amanda. Now believe, everybody I believe, knows. I believe Mike more than I believe Amanda. Yeah, Amanda, you are not you are not gonna win any any Oscars for this performance. Amanda, do you really love Mike? Yes, I do. There's just we need to sort some. She's angry. Out. She's too okay. she's too mad. Are you angry at him? Kind of, yeah. Do you feel... Well, it's Valentine's Day. I know, but... I've... No, no, you're mad because it's Valentine's Day. Well, yeah, that, but I've been mad for a while. What happened? Why? Just this whole week. This just... thing of him not calling. Yeah, and him hanging up on me and... All right, wait a minute. We're going to get to the bottom of this in 10 seconds. Okay, now when we left off, we were talking to Amanda. Amanda? Yes. Mike's still on the line. Mike is on the line, but Mike, Mike cannot hear you right now. Let's talk for just one second. What's really going on? Because I didn't buy that I love you crap for a second. I mean, I love him. I still care for him. It's just this, the kind of the week that he didn't call me kind of showed that he really didn't care for me. And it kind of bothered me. And it kind of it didn't really lose it. A little bit maybe it did. But it's just. The way he the way he showed it was like he didn't care, and I don't want to be treated like that. He, he, of he course, you, me before. And, and nor should you have to be treated that or, or or put up with being treated yeah, that way. But I think I think Mike's got something going on where he can't he can't contain his behavior. He really can't tolerate intimacy. <laughs> he's a guy. That's what he's got yeah, but going no, on. He's worse I, than a guy. He's, he's he he has he can't sit still with heavy feelings, and he has to push him away. I told the thing is I told because I guess his friend told me that he needed time by himself. And I said, that's fine. He can call me and tell me himself that he needs time alone. And I said, fine, I'll give it to him. Right. I'd, go, I'd rather him tell me that than put up a front. Right. All right, so let's just get to this real quickly. Let's just get to the bottom of this. You really like him, but you're angry because he hurt you by not calling for a week. Yeah, and, and, she's, and she, she, you're she's, scared that it's going to be a, yeah. a prelude. Right. She doesn't want to put up with this necessarily. Come. That's yeah. fine. Well, he's done this to me before. Well, you guys oh. need to talk. You need to talk. Yeah, we do. Mike. Right. I've been trying to do that. Mike. Yeah. Call her up right now. All right. All right. Thanks okay. a lot, guys. Good luck, guys. All right. Quit screwing up, Mike. That's my advice to all men, by the way. Quit screwing up. John, you're on Loveline. Hey, how you doing? Good. What's up? I got a question. Mm-hmm. Um, I was recently going out with a girl who has this uh, something I had never heard of, papilloma virus. It's called warts. Is that what it is? That's what it is. That's just a fancy name for it. Huh? That's a, that's the virus that causes warts. Okay, so unprotected sex, I can get this. Correct. Oh boy, so I should be checked out. Um, yeah, but actually, it's it's highly contagious. You should consider, even if you don't manifest warts, that you probably carry the virus. Wait, wait a minute, he probably carries the virus? If he had unprotected sex with her. Oh, okay. Is well, that what you did, John? What's that? You had unprotected sex with her, and then she told you she had HPV? Is that what that's called? Yes. Well, you well, are really getting fancy here, Adam. Yeah, well, um, oh, once or twice, but then uh, after that... Even that's all it I, takes once. John, weren't you just a little bit no, pissed? No, 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 I'm not saying once or twice only. Even when I found out, it's, it still went on because... The way that she explained it to me, it was it was something different. It wasn't uh, like a, I mean, if she would have said venereal warts, I would have knew that, obviously, right? But uh, uh, it was some know. fancy name that I had never heard of. And so, it, but, John, it is so common. You thought it was like dandruff or something? No, I, well, she said it was like a cancer or some crazy. Well, it huh. does it does tend to predispose to cancer. You feel like right. get her before she goes, right? 
Well, boy, I'm in trouble then because it was many, many, many times. Well, but look, uh, that that virus is so common in people who are young and sexually active. You probably already had a version of it anyway. Really? I mean, it is exceedingly common. So it's not as though you have something unique. And uh, you just need to wear a condom. You should wear a condom anyway. I wonder if she told you she had AIDS. What's that? I wonder if she told you she had AIDS. In did you ask her if she had AIDS before you had sex with her? Yeah, of course I did. <clears throat> and uh, Or well, anything else? Uh, or anything else. Well, or this AIDS is or the anything, anything else. else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, w everybody. Yeah, I knew this, but I didn't understand what it, exactly what it was all at right. all. Here's the rule, and, and neither did she, evidently. Let, let me explain the rule to everyone who's listening when it comes to sexual contact with people you haven't, you've known for under five years. When they say I have something and you don't understand it, that is your cue to put a condom on. I don't care. What it is, if you can't pronounce it, or if they just say, I have this, and then they start speaking Latin, you put a condom on. That's all you need to know. Uh, why would it be any different just than if you know you're going to have sex with that person that you put a condom on? Well, I'm saying you Regardless should, of right, what they say they have or don't have. wear a condom, but when you hear, I have this, when you hear that sentence uttered, you must put a condom on. Bef actually, during the conversation, even if you're eating dinner and they lean across the table and say, I have HPV, you go, <clears throat> hold on a second. <laughs> Waiter? I, think a, I think a condom should go on until you know the pe person better and you find out more about them. So is this something I need to go right away for, you think? Why? why? Well, I mean, is it, can, I, can I cure this? Can no. I get rid of it? No. I've got it forever. Correct. If I have it, it's there forever. Correct. And there's there's nothing to do about it. There's the the warts should be contained. At least that's the prevailing theory. That so you, if you if you get a bunch of warts, they should be treated because they, they they tend to proliferate. It tends to be more infectious when you have warts. Is that topical or is that a pill? There's mu not pills, but there are multiple different topical. But treatments. you know, I think if you if we take it and look at it this way, if you look at it like having a pet that will never die, it doesn't it doesn't make it so bad. Right. You know what I mean? It's like getting sea monkeys that will <laughs> will outlive you. John, does that, does that ease the pain? <laughs> well, my sea monkeys died, so. <laughs> oh, no. I love the package, by the way. They have, like, the king one they and the queen like one. They didn't and look like that. One of them's, like, running a, a carnival, a Ferris wheel and stuff, and then you see them, and they look like little brine shrimp or something. They float around, and the cat knocks a bowl over after a week. John? So I've got a life with sea monkeys. Great. Yes. <laughs> Good okay, luck. Okay, well, cleared it up for me. Thanks. Good luck, John. Okay. Speaking of sex, Susan. Yes, I have sex. Because we really haven't gotten into that with Drew. I'm moving away from Drew now. But I, I, I do have questions. You understand I have to ask. Certainly. Because we if I sex. don't... Yeah, okay. okay. You're not, not ashamed of that. Does he have a favorite position? <laughs> no, but he, we like having sex because it doesn't happen very often because he's never home. <laughs> he's mm -hmm. always too busy. So you're saying you don't have it with Drew very often. No, no, never with Drew. Drew's wondering why he's paying the bill for a pool man every year, and they don't have a pool. No, no, it's. I mean, uh -huh. of course. All right, no. let's talk about. Does he is he does he like to go and do you know weird places and weird you know elevators no. and laundry rooms no. and and things like that? No. He never says let's go traumatize the the triplets by doing it. In no, the crib. but I I do. Oh, you do. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's my point. Women enjoy that stuff. Well, I have. I'm more creative. Oh, you are. That's what he likes about me. Oh, he likes that you initiate this yes. stuff. That you... I'm, the, I'm the bad girl. Oh, so he does call you mommy once in a while, doesn't <laughs> no, he? No, 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 no. Yeah. Has he ever caught him mincing around in your panties? Like, <laughs> like, you, like let, let's, let me give you a hypothetical. You said, like, Drew, I'm going to go to the store, and then I'm going to get my nails done, and then we're going to enter a chess tournament. And you went out, and you drove down the street and realized you forgot your pocketbook or something, and you came right home, and there he is in a pair of frilly panties. Now if I find you... Stealing my underwear again, here's what's going to happen. This is not acceptable. <laughs> That's what I say. And is there, have you ever, did you know about any drug abuse or anything in college? I mean, did you yeah. ever hear about any kind of experimentation at all? No. Nothing? No. No, nothing that we could bust him on? <laughs> no, isn't it sad? You sure? <laughs> <laughs> you sure, Drew? You want to come clean? I when I was 19, I ate about four boiled peyote buttons and stayed up all night but felt no effect. Ah! You did? No, yes! No, I did not. That was I was telling a caller to I say that something like well, that. Well, that's not. news. Did you know he had a drug problem? Oh, no, no, I didn't. You know, he gambles a lot, too. Oh, yes. I, I taught him that, too. <laughs> all right, let's get back to 
to sex before <laughs> be, before the well dries up here. How many dates? Seriously, how many dates before you guys did the deed? Because he's up here talking like, you know, he, uh, the virgin fairy. I was going to say Mary, but he's a guy. He's telling everyone to wait, you know, wait it out and all that kind of stuff. But I bet he was I on totally top of disagree. You. You disagree with what? I totally disagree with that theory. If you want him to call you back, you have sex on the first date. Really? Yes. It, and it wait, was my idea. It, I made him turn the car around and go back. You guys, first date? You sir, yes. Are, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> first date because you... I never lie. You knew what you wanted. Yes, I did. There it was. Yes. You're a liberated woman. He was driving me home. I said, turn this car around. You're going the wrong way. You didn't grab the e-brake and crank the wheel real hard. Pretty close. And and, and he turned the car around, yes. didn't he? and drove another 20 miles. Did he slap the siren on the roof and do like 180? <laughs> yeah. Like he threw like a Rodney King thing all the <laughs> way back to your place? I don't know, but it was a fun ride. First date. Well, of course. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, you knew. Are you sure? I've heard the opposite on this no, show. No, 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 because because you knew. Ricky said, I, well, I hate to bring up his name, but I remember a conversation. I hate to bring up his name. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, I remember him saying something about how marriages d never work if you have sex on the first date, or you won't get married if you have sex on the first date. Right, and look at you two. You're miserable now. <laughs> <laughs> We've been together for, what, 12 years or something? <laughs> Sure, because he's he's waiting for the second sexual experience. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps thinking it's coming. Maybe tonight. Hey, maybe tonight. It's maybe. Found. Hey, maybe. anything? Anything before the show? We're both going to be awake when we get home. A little a nookie? Miracle. Any nookie before the show? No. Because no. Drew came in glowing. I have three children. Yeah. Yeah. Can't, I know. Can't you lie? Just, you can't just lock them in the room or anything, can you? All right, so let, let's move back to the sex here. First date, because you, you, you eyeball the guy at the gay bar where you met him, right? <laughs> You know what you like, and you go out. And the, the, you know he's a gentleman. Well, no, we 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 went out about two months after we met on the radio. So it's kind of like you've been going out for a while. Like I did this with a girl once, where like we went out on two dates, and then she went back to Minnesota for like a month, and then she came back, and I like nailed her in the airport. But we felt really good about in it in the airport, right at the baggage claim. You know how you bend over to you know with the, the carousel thing. You did. Yeah, I had to tip the porter, but. No, I would. Would you go along with oh me for a second? Gosh. The point is, is we could tell everybody. Oh yeah, we waited a month. When the, the reality was, is we waited two or three well, days. We never dated. We we just met. You got right into it, and then that was it. Well, you know, it's my fault. All right, because you I said just, turn the I car just around. I never, I never believed in this playing all these head games with calling or waiting for a call and waiting for a second date. And you know, I I knew if I was attracted to a guy and we hit it off that. It was going to happen probably eventually, and if I was going to wait, then he's going to think that I wasn't interested, and and I I really was attracted. Right, to and you're a liberated woman, and you're Very sexual liberated. being, and you know what you want. <laughs> yeah. All right. He never begs for a threesome, does he? No. Wait, he doesn't beg. He just asks. No. He just doesn't slip. Put uh, like notes in your cereal or anything. I'm all the woman he will ever need. All right, as far as you know. Now let me ask something <laughs> real fast, real fast. Let's run the sex. You found the dirt. I'm I, sorry. That is good. That's good. But it, but it's my dirt. It's kind of well. But we shouldn't look at it that way because you guys have been together for 12 years now. Ren, there's nothing wrong with that. All you did was get an early start. <laughs> Start. Went, you, it's you not gotta, like we had sex before we went out to dinner or something. You got to you know? jump on sex. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! You guys, you guys worked up a little appetite before you went to the restaurant. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. That's why he drives that station no, wagon. It was after dinner and the drinks and all that. All right, let me. Oh, sure. Nothing wrong. He's no stu. He, you know what he tells me all the time? He says when I talk about dating and I talk about women, I talk about getting in the pants. He goes. Juice him up and go. And he gives me a big thumbs up. <laughs> he does not. He certainly does. No way. All right, let me just ask, and because I have to ask. I have to ask. We have to get to the size department. We do, because it was on the screen, and because I would be remiss if I didn't ask, is he small, puny, or microscopic? Which one is it? We're talking about penises like now. How tall he is, or what? No, no. All right, let's go to girth. There's just his just mind. Quick. Is, let's go. Know, to, let's talk openly about penises for for just one second. Size. <laughs> I don't want to ask this, but you got to realize I will be attacked if I don't ask the probing questions. Well, but I don't think that's really. No, it's not relevant. Not no. for me. Not at this stage of our relationship. He's perfect. Perfect. 
For me. Call him me- medium small. He's perfect. Smallish. Well, on small side. Small. Yeah. A little small, but 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 perfect. I didn't say that. He's medium. not small. If he, he wouldn't be perfect if he was small. Okay, and because he wouldn't be perfect if he was extra large. You, you know, the average size penis is three and a half inches. So he says about average. <laughs> God, I don't know. I don't measure it. He's huge. I don't know. <laughs> Have you ever caught him measuring it? No. Does he ever talk to his penis? No. Has he named his penis? <laughs> he no, on his stick I, for me. Actually, I have. No. Does he ever push it through the mail slot and wait for the lady to come bringing the parcels? Adam, geez, have you? Oh, hell yes. And Why? I live in apartments. So it's just do people that? coming down the you hall know, that's it. Somebody did that to me once, but I don't think it was him. Really? Yeah. They hung it through the mail slot? No, they hung it through the window. I, I, I've tried to get mine through the mail slot. Why do guys do that? Well, exterior doors Scared are the ancient. the hell out of me. I couldn't leave my house for a week. Jeez. I mean, come he on. He hung his penis out the window? No, some guy did once when I was living alone. Hung his penis out of in, your window? In the window. Toward you? Yes. There's. Oh. Why do guys do that? I don't, maybe Why it do was, guys do maybe that? Maybe it was hot. Maybe one of the air. <laughs> I, it could be a total. I had to call the be, police. The police thought I was totally out of my mind. So there was a penis in my window. <laughs> yeah, we got a 6900 going down on Elm Street. <laughs> See the woman seeing the penis. Really? So never, oh, uh, I, never I, anything strange. I am, All right. Let me real quick, real quick. I let me ask you this seriously, because every this guy is before every, I was married, every guy's done this. Has he ever went to the bathroom for just a moment while you're in bed, headed back in, took his penis and testicles, put it between his legs so no. it looked like he had just a vagina, and no. he said, come here, come here, kiss kiss Auntie Susie. No. He never said anything like that. <laughs> no. Nothing I'm, weird. No. And I do have an Auntie Susie. That's not funny. Oh, that's see. That's see. I she's knew. She's a real Auntie Susie. Okay, so nothing weird like that. I hope she's not listening. Never, never asked you to put anything <laughs> strange in his butt? In his butt? Yes. No. I have to ask. Do you understand? Well, maybe a, a gerbil or something. <laughs> <laughs> the kids were like, where's the pet? <laughs> what happened to our salamander, Ma? <laughs> He's gone to a better place, son. <laughs> Your dad will be passing him in a matter of hours. Ew. Nothing, nothing like that. This is so weird. Never asked you to dress up in anything strange? Me? Yes. No. Little something. Come on. No. Never wanted you to play like... Tupperware party no, or no. Uh-uh. nothing? Not unless I wanted to. Never, never, never played like a meter inspector. <laughs> no. <laughs> Bible salesman. Oh God! You uh, ever tell him to put on his no, lab coat and use his stethoscope the he's right actually way? Actually, a pretty normal guy. I taught him everything he knows. Nothing weird. All right, all right. Last line of questioning. Okay, make it quick. Is it, did he ever bring home, like, a cadaver and say, let's have a threesome? No, no, no. Okay. Did he ever bring home any tools or anything from work? You know, a- any any cheek spreaders or no. tongue depressors or, no. or, or you know, uh, <laughs> or carbuncle piercers or... Uh, no, he... Anything? No. Never brought home, like, a rag soaked in ether and tried to force it on you? Just his wonderful self, that's all. Does he ever bring home any, like, um, any uh, sample pharmaceuticals and say, you know, let's... No. let's Nothing? No. No, unfortunately. <laughs> Does he ever leave the toilet seat down or up? No, he puts it down. I make him do that. How did I learn that, though? I had to train him. Yeah. During pregnancy. Took pregnancy. Oh, I fell in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> you fell in the toilet? I was pregnant with triplets, and I fell in the toilet. I was so mad at because him. Because you're carrying around a lot of weight, <laughs> and once you start that, that downward momentum. Oh, I was mad. I said, Drew, you know, I'm pregnant with triplets. You got to put the toilet seat down because I fell in. Because I, I, you know, I got heavy. <laughs> so you train him for that. I had really strong legs, you know, but after the 50 pounds were in my tummy area, I, I couldn't Any hold it up weird now. grooming habits? Anything? Does he trim <laughs> things in a strange manner? No, he plucks his eyebrows right in the middle sometimes. Right in the middle. Well, I do that too, otherwise I'll, I'll look like. Is that like- weird? Well, I do it, so I can't. I can't say anything. I'll, I'll look like <laughs> Matt Dillon in his tri brow if I don't. Do you plug? If any, I, don't do that. I know you shaved your butt. I'll, I'll, uh, I heard right, that let's one. Stick, let's stick to Drew for just a moment here. Has he ever shaved anything weird? No. Nothing. No. Any way he applies aftershave that we need to know about? No. And no talc. Does he talc up? Has he been no. listening to me with the talc down the shorts? No. Does he ever wear underpants more than, more than one day in a row? No. 
Unless we're on a ski trip or something, and he runs out. Do you ever catch him just uh, wallowing in the hamper like a like a like a dog rolling around on a lawn? No, we have people who do the laundry, and it's not me. Thank God. Does he pee? He's in, great. He, does he pee in the shower? He well, I asked him that because the cats were peeing on the carpet outside the shower once, and I, I told him to stop it, and he did. He pees in the shower. Yeah, he said kitty he did. Kitty see, kitty do. <laughs> Has he ever taken a dump on the glass coffee table in the living room? Oh, yeah. He did once, All actually. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Hi, this is Victoria Paris, and you're listening to Love Line with Dr. Drew and Adam Carella. Oh, I'm a tremendous fan of her, her work, and she has quite a large body of work. Uh, porn star Victoria Paris there. Phone numbers 1 800 L O V E 191. 1 800 568 3191. Fax number 310 854 4455. We're here with Drew, who took his grilling like a man, I must say, and his uh, lovely wife, his foxy wife, his <clears throat> more than attractive wife. You wouldn't, attractive is what you call uh, average looking people when you're trying to be polite. She is foxy, and I can see... Thank you, Adam. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You know, I can see why any woman would be attracted to Drew, but I can see... You're working it, aren't you? (laughs) ...why he assaulted you on the first date. Now (laughs) I see what it was all about. And let me just read this fax. Just wanted to clarify... He didn't assault me. ...what transvestite training is. Anything a dominatrix does to their submissive is called training, meaning... Uh, they're submissive, so, I guess, so their a trans- partner. So transvestite training must mean that it's somebody, they're dominating a transvestite. Right. Therefore, if a guy thinks he might enjoy being dressed up as a woman, as Drew admitted to earlier, if you didn't catch that, a lot stop, of people weren't listening, uh, he hires a dominatrix to train him. In other words, sl- slowly to acclimate him to cross-dressing. Might start out with a woman's underwear and progress to dresses and wigs and makeup and etc. Hmm. Eventually, you become what everyone's grandmother looks like, I, I guess. Because uh, what what people's grandmothers look like is kind of like ugly guys in drag. If you if you really think about it, uh, just happy to help out you guys, Scott in Brentwood. Well, we thank you for that little ditty, Scott. Now let's go back to the phones, Paul. Hi, how you doing? Hi, you're on Loveline. Thanks. Um, well, I was recently dating this girl, and um, well, when I wasn't doing. Um, Anything that day. Um, well, I, I, I just went to the movies with a couple of my best friends. And so when I, we were seeing a movie, I saw her and this other girl kissing. Mm-hmm. Weird. Mm-hmm. You I saw, know. wait a minute, you saw her and another girl? Yeah. It, it's kind of weird at this age, you know. I, I just, hey, how old are you, Paul? 13. How old is she? 14. And were they really making out? or Because girls can be more affectionate, at least in public, than men. They're more comfortable with it, and sometimes it will embrace or give a peck on the cheek or something like that. It doesn't mean, it, it doesn't mean it's in a sexual way. Yeah, well, it was kind of dark, and it made me feel really weird. Well, was it in a sexual way? Were they making out? Um, well, they were, I saw, like, two heads there, like shadows, and they were there for, like, five seconds. Very, you know, I couldn't say anything to my friends. I, I just saw it, and I just like, you know, freaked out. So like, Paul, Paul really sounds upset about this. Yeah, all right, so Paul, we'll just go along and say that this actually happened, and take it, take it from that point. Right. Okay. Okay. So this is a girl you you had, been dating. Yeah. And who you felt <laughs> some pretty strong feelings for. Much like the feelings that Susan generated for Doc Drew after only the first date. So, so Paul, you think she may be, well, I guess bisexual now. If you can be at 14, if you can, if you can establish that. Drew's shaking his head no. That's right. It's kind of weird. I think you shouldn't jump to any conclusions. Um, I mean, you really don't. I, I mean, I think that, I mean, I think that it's nice how she finds, you know, love with another person. Right. But we were going out, and I'm not, of course, I'm not jealous or anything. Why not? weird. I mean, I am kind of jealous. You don't know if you should be jealous or not since it's another girl. Oh, yeah. Right? Look, why don't you give her a chance to tell you about what she's yeah, feeling? Yeah, I'm afraid to talk to her about it because um, I don't want to, you know, 
I, I can understand that you would be, but I, I think you need to because you really, first of all, don't know really what you saw. Secondly, you're, part of what you're upset about is that she's doing funny things and doing things with other people when you think you guys are kind of together. Yeah. And then thirdly, you wonder what her problem is with her sexual identity. Is she is she, is she gay or what? Is she, what's going on with her? She's so young and why? It's making you upset and feel weird and wonder about what her intentions are with your relationship. I think you got to give her a chance to talk about it. Okay. Yeah, that's what I should do. Paul, confront her in in a in, in in not a confronting way though. Just bring it up as best you can. Discuss it with her and figure out what's going on before you jump to too many conclusions. And it's funny how cheating sort of runs the gamut, meaning at the top of the cheating list is your girlfriend getting it on with another guy, or if you're a girl, your boyfriend getting it on with another girl. But then there's all sorts of shades of gray beneath that, you know what I mean? Then underneath that is probably having a same-sex type thing, which which guys would not look at as bad as another guy being with their But, but for 13 they, they, he doesn't know what to make of that. He's just It just makes him feel weird and overwhelmed right, because it right. doesn't fit his sense of who she is. And for, we, for a lot of women, it keeps going down into other shades of gray, which is like finding a Hustler magazine under the bed or something like that, you know? So it's like there's, there's, there's overt cheating and then there's sort of grades of cheating. But uh, <clears throat> everyone, everyone seems to have their draw their own line. Mine is a little above the part about having sex with someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Alex. Yeah. You're on Love Line. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Fantastic. <laughs> um, well, I, I had a question. I wanted to know. It was kind of funny that you guys mentioned uh, that. Uh, the doctor's wife is very attractive because that was what my question was. Um, mm. How important uh, do you guys feel um, physical attractiveness is? Well, the doc is going to sit here and do a skin deep rap, and uh, he was attracted to her brain, but that does not explain <laughs> why he attacked her on the first date. And it was essentially she could bring him up on charges, although I'm not sure about the statute of li limitations at this point. But I, th I think you could get a, a good lawyer, would get you something out of this. Yeah, so he's going to pull that rap, like most guys do. But let's face it, guys are attracted to physical beauty. And how important is it? It probably has to do with how secure you are. The more secure you are, the less important it is, and Why? vice versa. You, what, is your, what is your situation? Why are you asking this question? Um, well, I've been listening to this show for about a week, and I was trying to think of something to ask. Oh. And uh, <laughs> actually, uh, uh, the, your voice... I was imagining that the doctor's wife is actually, um, she seems quite attractive, and I was wondering if it was true. Um, but that well, wasn't really you. my question. That was, why, how, that was why I thought to ask it. Well, she is, and, 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 and I think men, unfortunately, are much uh, less evolved in this department than women are, because women can be attracted, and it can, it can be in a sexual way, to guys based on sense of humor, based on... Um, more, more things that you would have to do with personality, what you would call personality traits, where is guys, if, if Squeaky Fromm looked good in a party dress, then we would have her paroled and be on top of her in a second. It does, that is a uh, Manson reference there. The yes, point, I know. The point is, the point is, is guys don't really care about the personality. Later, they do. Well, I do care about inner beauty and all that, very much so. But, I, I, you know, I, I feel like a person that has... Both the inner and the outer beauty is kind of rare. Right. Inner beauty is great, but if you have to cut through a big, thick, ugly skin to get to it, then it's rough. Or there's beautiful women that have nothing inside. Or, or right. Good and I, I, went guys. Through that, I went through that last year. You have to just go through it. I mean, I dated guys that were good looking but total jerks, and, you know, or I, I dated guys for a long time that were good looking to a certain degree, but, you know, had a great personality. But, you know, I was lucky with Drew because he was really gorgeous and really smart and really wonderful, and I ended up with him. I, I, use, I used to see beauty in, you know, everything that I did as a job. I mean, I was, I was working as a model. I had a group of models working for me, and, and, you know, Drew was attractive. I could tell he was attractive, but I also knew he was intelligent, and he was... He was well-rounded and very nice. Right, the total package. I mean, it's it's really hard to find people like that, but you know, I I was really lucky, and I, you know, and and a lot of people don't like to say that they chose their partner because of the way they looked, and 
I'm not perfect. I mean, Drew, you know, loves me for who I am. He, he, I was probably pretty when he met me, and you know, as I get older, it gets worse and worse. But baby, don't say that. But, yeah. but you know, it's not really important if you're happy with your person, your love of your life. I mean, if it's your soulmate or somebody that you want to be with for the rest of your life, it doesn't matter what you look like. And and I can say this: even even immature guys can eventually be attracted physically to a characteristic, meaning you can see someone, everyone knows this story, you see someone, you think, eh, they're okay, but nothing big, but then you get to know them a little, maybe they're a friend of a friend, maybe they're in your clique, and you hear their rap, and you see the way they treat their friends, and you see their talents, and what they're into, or their sense of humor, and you start getting more and more physically attracted to someone based on that, although women are much better at that than guys. Shauna. Hello. You're on Love Line. Hello. Um, how are you guys doing? Well. <laughs> okay, I have a couple questions. Yes. Um, okay, I'm I have a lot of gay friends and stuff and and I'm I'm not gay, but I've been having dreams about having sex with women and I was wondering, you know, am, am I gay or something? No. Would that mean That doesn't mean you're gay, and maybe you have those kinds of homosexual feelings or even tendencies, but it doesn't mean you're gay. Uh-huh. And I told my friend um, Amanda about it, and I think she um, told the girl. And now I, th I think she like wants me, but I'm and when I I have dreams about her, but yeah, I I don't like. Trying to re know. relax, relax. Uh -huh. Don't don't get forced into anything. Don't do anything you don't want to do. Don't assume just because that person is aware of some kind of vague attraction you have for her, she's going to be able to suck you into a relationship or attack you in some way. Mm -hmm. Not going to happen. And let me tell you, as you get older, you learn to ignore your dreams mm -hmm. because you have them every night. They make no sense. I, you know, I have dreams where I'm like leading a group of, uh, you know, French liberators into Nazi Germany to like free Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> And this is a reoccurring thing, but is I this? just have bizarre oh, dreams. I have bees. I had had dreams. My dad tried to kill me a few times for for talking too much in front of the TV I set. That that's actually a real common dream. Yeah, or not. yeah. Is my dad or, or uh, anyone's dad? Anyone's dad. Because <laughs> <laughs> everyone's having about my dad. Then we got to look into yeah, that. Got a little bit of problem. But the the point is, is everyone has weird dreams and. <laughs> All right, I'll do this after the commercial. Everybody has weird dreams, and you cannot. Pay attention to them. Mm -hmm. All right. Yet next question, real fast. Um, that's all I had. You oh. know what? Can I say something about dreams? Yes. If you look back two days, sometimes you can trace your dreams back about two days to mm -hmm. something that happened to you two days before. Like you might have seen something on TV or heard something on the radio. Like How'd you, you know, know that? we're talking. How'd you come up with that? Because it usually takes a couple of days for your subconscious to well, sort that, of. That was Freud's theory. That was his theory. Like seven, that happens hours. to me all the time. Like yeah. if a couple of days go by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have dreams about what happened two days before, yeah, and I try to put together all the things that happened two days before. And, and they're, usually, they're usually vague, symbolic references from two days before. Two days after you had your first date with Drew, <laughs> did you dream that a dog <laughs> had attacked you no, I had in the great park dreams. and dry hump great your... dreams. Okay. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191, 1-800-568-3191, fax number 310-854-4455. This show is called Love Line. I'm called Adam Carolla. He is called Dr. Drew, and she is called Mrs. Drew, Susan, who's here tonight uh, dishing all kinds of dirt on Drew, loosening up a little and having a good time. And I think our listeners appreciate that because they listen to Drew week in and week out, month in and month out, year in and year out. And nobody knows my problems. We don't care about your problems. Well, I have problems, though. But we don't care. we got to talk about it. Why? Unless... It's your fault, Adam. Unless the problems Drew gave you. He gave them to me. Like crabs? <laughs> what do you got? Well, like I'm always alone, and I, you know, I have to take care of the kids every night when he comes on the air, and he works three jobs, and he's an overachiever, and, you know, he's a great guy, but, you know, there are the downsides but, of by that. By the way, overachiever is not a good term. Overachiever means dumb guy way over his head. Doing way more than he should have, uh, accomplishing way more than he should have accomplished with the brains God gave him. I think, no, it, I know how you meant it. Is that what that means? Well, not really, but sort of. I would say Drew's achieving about as much as he should achieve given all the tools 
that he has. I don't want to nitpick. And then, you know, it's just, it's been going on for years and years and years. And you're and, lonely. Yeah, and I have three kids. And, and you I'm have raising needs. Them and, oh, sure. And you're in your uh, early 30s now. Well, yeah. Yeah, okay. That means late 30s. <laughs> 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 no, you're no seriously. You you don't look a day over thirty nine. Okay, all right. No, all you right. don't. You really don't look a day over like thirty two. You look very oh, young. You, you you've stayed out of the sun. Nope. I guess I guess you kicked the heroin thing some years back, <laughs> and you look you look really good. Uh, and the point is 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 as you get older, and I'm guessing you started off a little horny in life. Uh, you don't have to answer because we don't we don't need to shame well, you or the not, doctor it's here. Not but that I'm like uh, over sex or something or under sex or whatever it would be. I'm I'm just basically alone most of the time. Right, and you know I'm raising three three year olds. You're a woman and you have needs. Right, and I spend most of my time with you know the nannies or the grandparents and the kids or. You know, driving between the gym and the market and nursery school. And as good as the doctor is, he's still I not... have a great life. I live in a nice house. I'm a very happy person. But I'm, right. it's like, but it's it's like a being a single it's parent. It's a living hell. It's, it's a hell. single parent with... It's hell. Yeah, yeah. it's busy. It's, yeah, it's, it's hell. It's lonely. It's a busy, it's it's a busy lonely. chaotic hell. And as, I was going to say, as good as the doctor is, he's still not figured out a way... To remove his penis and leave it at home when he goes That's out right. for one of his 18-hour right. days. <laughs> I need that. <laughs> See, I worked that out, but I, but I ended up losing it. So I'm going to go out to the car and look under the seat And you now. know what? You know what it is? It's not just the sex. It's like having the time to... Women need time to get into a sexual relationship or have the nurturing. Right. And, you know, just having somebody around to... He, he's right. great. He comes home and he rubs my feet. It's really right. great. After a long day, he comes home and he rubs my feet. Wow. And that's like the greatest thing, you know? Yeah, but you want that time before to build into the sex. Yeah, but then, you know, he leaves at 930, so the sex, you know, isn't like, as often as we right. like it to now, be. Right. Now, uh, essentially, four plays. Drew saying, come on, pull your skirt up, baby. Oh, we're too tired, you know, Some on the weekends. We're like, oh, my God, I'm hey, so hey, tired. Has he ever fallen asleep on you? What? Yes. He, he's tired, too. Right. He works so much. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but we yeah. go away, and we try to take vacations, but, you know, it's really, you have to be really strong. You can't be clingy, and you have to just be able to bear through it. Right, but once you get out of town, once the bags drop in the room and the door gets shut. It's fine. It's if, as long as we have a nanny with us, if we have our kids, we have to get a completely different hotel room for the kids. You know, and if we go away alone, which we're going to actually do you, you for You can't leave them in the car? No. Even no. if it's not too hot? So, you know, it's pretty tricky. It's pretty but tricky. it's just a big... Uh, but it, most parents go through this. I mean, It's, it's a free-for-all in that room, though, once you guys get alone. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah, like freaking yeah. Woodstock in there. Am I right? <laughs> yes, the clothes it's, flying from every direction. Yeah, it's usually pretty good. Drew ever fog the glasses up? Well, right. I don't think he wears them. Quick question. He ever put the glasses on around his waist so his no. penis becomes a no, nose? No, what are you talking about? Never Jeez. never does that and then puts like an oversized okay. top hat on. Adam, jeez. Never. Okay, I have some quick penis questions. Uh, more penis I questions? I don't want to ask them, you know what? but I, I did get like a fax. I don't like penis questions. I don't either, but you understand I have to ask. <laughs> oh, no. I got I got a fax. Uh, it says, uh, compliments me on getting to some of the hard-hitting questions, but said we left the penis query too quickly. Uh, we've yet to find out if the good doctor is circumcised. Yes. Yes, okay. Oh, why are you prompting me? I don't know if I should be answering these questions. Don't be prompting, Drew. Drew. Drew told me to answer that. Okay, Drew, yes. Drew, put your hands by your, by your side. Uh, whether it bends <laughs> to the left or to the right, and I guess it depends on what side of him, if you're standing in front of him or behind I, him. I, I, no comment. No, I don't no know. No pull? I have no pull no one idea. way or the other? I, uh, it's perfect. There's no English on that, Weenus? I have no idea. Okay. So you're saying straight? Yes, but you know, I don't know. Like the crow flies. I can't tell you. His penis goes what like the crow What difference flies. does it make? I mean, is he going to win an award well, or something? I'll tell you what difference it makes. Inquiring minds want to know. Our sick listeners are interested. Why? I'm not interested in this. You Why? think it's for my own pleasure? It's for your own pleasure, I'm sure. No, it is not. This is a fax. Do you, do you hear that? Okay, let me ask a few more questions. Uh, does he wear it to the left, the right, or the middle? When I he's have wearing, no idea. Wearing, well, when I, he's wearing slacks. I never look. You don't look? No. Drew, you want to jump in on that? No, right, he I'm, doesn't. I'm, I'm guessing he goes down the right foul I, I line I haven't for really one. thought about it. Okay. Uh, oral sex. All right. Now, I'm sure he's into that. You're just not on that. Oh, he's sure. 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 He's into that. Is. And he's a giver, yes, too. Oh, yes. He good. knows what a woman likes. Oh, yes. Does he take the glasses off? 
does he have the decency to take the glasses of off? Of course, and he shaves. Does, okay, oh, let's he shaves. Go. Does he ever do that little oh, reflective mirror that doctors wear just to really? No, no. no there isn't and any. he knows where the G spot is. Oh, he does. Yeah. So keep going. Oh, okay. Because I'm gonna, wait a minute. I'm going to find <laughs> out what that is in a minute. Uh, inner, any or Audi belly button? He has an any. Does he have a third nipple? No. Okay. But well. I do. No. <laughs> Remember, I had three. I had to grow another breast. All right. You got triplets. Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, that's it. Sincerely, a gay fan. So uh, there you have it. Okay. All right. We're going back to the phones, and I thank you for your sincerity and your frankness, Jim. Yes. You're on Loveline. What's up, Adam? How are you, Jimbo? I'm all right. How are you doing? Oh, I couldn't be better. Hi, interesting show tonight. Thank you. I just, uh, my problem here is I was going out with this girl, and I went out with her for about a year, and we were supposed to get married in July, right? Right. And about two months ago, she starts freaking out on me, starts saying she don't know if she's ready to get married, blah, 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 needs to date other people, whatever, you know, and I'm like... The whole time I'm just going, well, she's just got cold feet, whatever, you know. So I kind of backed off, and she started dating this other guy, right? Mm-hmm. Like the week after, the day after I moved out. Don't right? think that he wasn't lined up. Oh, I know. Well, I in advance like of the that. time, uh, the starving like student showed up with the van. Yeah. So anyway, the problem here. Signaling is... to the bullpen, by the way. Yes, yeah. calling in a relief penis. Yes, Jim. <laughs> oh man. It hurts, baby. <laughs> I've been the problem there. Is here. Okay, uh, about a month goes by, and I'm just aching, man, the whole time, you know. I'm, mm. I'm like, doing the whole, you know, okay, I'm going to feel this now and not feel it later. Ain't you doing any stocking? Huh? You doing any stocking? What's that? That's that's where you follow her around? No, 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 no. Not parked I'm out not front a, of her house? No, I'm not a stalker. None of that? None of that get loaded and bust in the house? God damn no, I left man. my chapstick here six months ago. Where is it? <laughs> I need it. No, I didn't want to deal with that, so... I left it alone, you know, and let her do what she was going to do. And, and then I started dating this chick that was 18, right? Me and her were 24. And then right. I started dating this friend of mine. You went I, younger. Yeah, she's right. only 18. And, right. And, uh, and she's great, man. She's beautiful. She's, you know, going places. She's going to New York next semester for school. And so she's not in the picture permanently. Mm-hmm. But my problem is, like, I'm starting to really like her, and we're starting to, like, get rid. You know, it's it's getting to the point where... We could like be having sex any time now. Mm-hmm. I've been holding back. I haven't been like. No. Oh. Well, it that's going. refreshing to hear. You know. Unlike some other people. And so. Surprised they're not doing it right here in the console. <laughs> so you know now the problem is is my ex is calling me, you know, and she's starting to like feel all this pain and like wondering if we could have done something to work it out and what, and then it throws my heart too because I'm like well, part of me is going well. Sh- you know, I wanted to be with her, and I wanted to get married to her, and yeah. now I'm with this other girl. All right, girl, all right, and... Jim, 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 Jim. Oh, gonna, man. Susan's going to help us on this, but here's my take as a guy. Uh-huh. I would write the ex off because uh-huh. I don't think you're going to be able to forgive her anytime soon uh-huh. for this situation. You may say, I forgive you. And then one day you're going to start talking about something, and she's uh-huh. going to go, what kind of dressing should I get on my salad? Yeah. And, and you're going to go, Thousand Island or French. And then you're going to yell, well, at least I'm not banging guys behind your back. <laughs> oh, no. You're going to okay. work that into every conversation. Okay. Do you understand? Is that how guys are? Yes. They yeah. cannot let things go. Really? They can't. But they women can't let can. It go. Women can. But see, this is the Because they're smart. This is the deal. She's calling me, asking me questions about this other girl because she knows I'm dating her. Damn straight asking, she is. Asking me where we, you know, how how often we see each other, where do we go, what do we do, like, you know, just probing me in roundabout ways to get all this information. And I'm like going, well, what difference does it make? Right. All know? right. She doesn't sound mature. And I don't, I'm not here. I don't want to just, you know commit acts of misogyny on the air. I'm not here just to bash her because she's a woman. But I am here to say that she left you know, you guys were living together. You guys were talking about getting married. She was your fiance, for I Christ's take sake. Her to Jamaica, July, you were going to take her to damn Jamaica and home. I'm assuming. Yeah. Yes. The point is, is she moves out and starts up with a guy immediately yeah. and she starts works right. With she works with the guy. Okay, that's what I needed to hear. I say it every time. They stalk their prey. Their Do you understand? Supervisor. They're like cheetahs up in a tree. The supervisor. Yeah. Super. Okay. So that's not going to work out. This isn't yeah. going to work. And that's 
why that's why she's back at him because the other right, it's not working work. out. Now she's coming back. Forget it, Jim. Forget it. You got I prob- like to hear you, Doctor Drew, man. I've been, <laughs> been kind of quiet. quiet all night. I sure have. <laughs> He's been putting his place. That's why. Well, I, I've been you know, hiding under the table here. I think, I, I, Drew and I have different ideas about this. I think we think differently on this whole subject. Well, Why are women so evil, man? <laughs> no, no, Jim. But Jim, Jim, Jim please, actually, you, you, s- you sound like a reasonably healthy guy, and you've, you've got this new relationship, and you're able to enjoy it, and you're going to explore other people. Right. Take your time. Live your life. Work there'll it be, out with Lolita. Yeah, there'll be other people in your life that will come through, and I'm sure you'll look back and see how, thank goodness, things worked out the way they did. And if you do go back with your ex fiance, make sure you give it time before you get totally involved to the point right. where you're going to get married and right. make sure you can trust her find out what happened and you know i'm not totally against going back with her i'm, I'm not either to, i'm not i'm I not mean, either but i don't think it's a good idea i forbid it and i put a curse on anyone who takes her oh you know we have a fun time here on love line uh beautiful phone op sherry and beautiful Producer Ann, we're having a, a lovely time at uh, Doc Drew's expense tonight, learning about all sorts of things, all sorts of dirty little little skeletons that Drew had in his closet. And it's really a compliment to you, Drew, because, and Ann, you can chime in here if you like. If Drew was a fat, repulsive, disgusting tub of a man, you would not give a right, you, you would actually be repulsed by hearing these these stories by stuff like this makes little, me sick <laughs> hearing these little sexual revelations wouldn't you Anne? definitely but it's because but it's okay when it's true when it's true because look at him yeah he's you know a god he is god. a god he's oh. a god he's he's a, a god. god he's he's like uh adonis and um in in patrick swayze <laughs> There's just got to be some more dirt on him. He can't be that perfect, Susan. I know it's hard, isn't it? All right, we have we have about we have about 50 seconds, Susan. Is there anything has he ever had to the best of your knowledge? And just uh, hypothesize here. If you'd if like you... to write to us or ask any of these lovely questions, uh, it's Love Lion PO Box 4345, Hollywood, California 90078. Email at luv191 at aol. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow. I, and no, I suspect have you ever I will be back ca- tomorrow. Have you ever caught him chasing no. uh, like a, a chicken around the house no, yelling, give me some perfect. sugar? Never. And I appreciate him letting me come on the show tonight. Uh, and, and you as well. And we appreciate having you, Susan. And we hope to see you, well, before we'll see you before next year, but hear you next Valentine's Day show. And, and I hope... Um, my kids are okay, and, and Nanny Raina is having a fun time tonight. I'm sure they're in one piece. And I want to say that Barry Nolan from Hard Copy is going to be on tomorrow night, and we can talk more about dirt. Until then, I'm Adam Carolla. And I'm Dr. Drew. And we'll see you tomorrow. So that's it, then. You listening to Love Line. The opinions expressed on Love Line by Adam Carolla, Dr. Drew, or anyone are not necessarily ours. Happy, 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 happy.